Okay, and so completed the mission topic. So in yesterday class, we discussed about uh, how to create uh, uh, jobs, how to schedule, how to create maintenance plan, how to schedule them, how to configure database mail, how to send emails, and uh, how to configure uh, alerts. So these are the things we discussed in yesterday class. So coming to the today class, today class, we are going to discuss about disaster recovery and high availability solution. So this is very important and useful topic. So Microsoft is providing five different uh, solutions uh, which we can use it for uh, high availability and disaster recovery solutions. Okay. So again, so I think we have five log shipping, mirroring, replication, clustering, and all these. So we have a five solution which we can use it for high availability and disaster recovery solutions. So using these solutions, we can uh, uh, protect the data enormously. Okay, so we'll see that uh, one after one. So, after, uh, like first, we'll start with the log shipping, then after that, the remaining uh, topics we'll discuss. Okay, so in this topic, the first thing what is disaster recovery and what is availability? We have to understand these two terminologies so because uh, the log shipping is raw capability and solutions right so first year we have to understand what is the disaster recovery and what is available first we have to clear about these two technologies once you clear about then we'll start we'll jump into the log so what is disaster recovery means so it is an event that causes the data loss so the disaster recovery the disaster recovery an event that causes the data loss and uh, the disaster events are numerous uh, like power failure or maybe hardware failure or maybe virus or maybe catastrophic failure like uh, uh, earthquake, earthquake or floods these are all we can call it as a disaster events okay we cannot assume so when those kind of uh, disasters happen so we have to product the data when disaster those kind of disasters happen for example uh, we take a general example uh, we are working for icici bank icici bank uh, all their operations are uh, i mean all the transactions information are storing in uh, store in uh, saving at a location so they are maintaining the data center data center means collection of uh, uh, servers they, where they are placing that place we can call it the data center so if something is happening in the data center, maybe the building uh, entirely collapsed or maybe bomb blast or what that say, something is happening. So in that case, there might be chance of loss in the data. Okay, and we cannot accept, we cannot, I mean, we cannot uh, expect when those kind of things will happen. So to prevent to measure, we have to, uh, uh, I mean, we have to use the disaster, one of the disaster recovery solution to protect the data. Okay, if you remember in previous classes, mainly we're talking about backup and restore. So we are taking the backup on a regular basis to protect the data. And I assume this if the entire data center is called, the server is uh, down or maybe uh, corrupted, or database is also corrupted. In that case, we cannot use the backups to record the data. That time, it will it backup and recovery solution, backup and restore solution, solution will not work, right? So backup and restore is a traditional recovery solution, but it is not a hundred percent disaster recovery solution. Okay, don't get confused. A disaster is an event that causes the data loss, and uh, as a preventive measurement, we have to protect the. Uh, and to disasters happen to protecting the data so we have to use the disaster recovery solution and microsoft is providing five different various uh, disaster recovery and liability solutions those are log shipping mirroring replication clustering and all these things. okay so here two important points we have to keep in mind for disaster recovery solution so when disasters happen when disaster is happen so when disaster is happen so like um, 
the data, I mean, uh, like the, the main, the disaster recovery plan in the sense, we, we, we clear about what is the disaster recovery, right? So disaster recovery plan, how we can apply whatever uh, servers we are maintaining in Adraban, the same replica of servers we need to maintain in other locations. Okay, and we have to configure one of the disaster recovery solution to move the data continuously without manual intervention from Hyderabad server to Bangalore server. Once you set the disaster recovery solution between Hyderabad server to Bangalore or maybe whatever location you we feel uh, secure and healthy, so we can select the place. One one in Mumbai use the uh, different uh, places so disaster recovery plan means whatever servers you are maintaining in the source in our example Hyderabad, Hyderabad same kind of uh, replica or maybe service we need to maintain in different uh, locations in the Bangalore and if you set the disaster recovery solution either one of the solutions like lock setting or mirroring what will happen without manual intervention whatever changes happen in Hyderabad automatically those changes will replicate it to the Bangalore. So if in case, I mean, if uh, either of servers are collapsed uh, for uh, any kind of disaster event, so we can use the Bangalore server because uh, the same kind of data we can uh, access from Bangalore servers, right? So this kind of uh, setup we can call it as a disaster recovery or high availability configuration or setup. So here the two important points are, if this, to configure disaster recovery solution, when disasters happen, Bangalore server will not come to online automatically. There is a manual intervention required. So we need to spend some time to bring the Bangalore servers online. That is the one point. And the second important point is that, so we cannot assure uh, to record the all the amount of data. There might be chances of losing some kind of data. So that's mean minimal data loss needs to need to accept. So these are the two important points we need to keep in mind. One is one is that when uh, when disaster when uh, the when Hyderabad uh, servers are collapsing, Bangalore servers will not come to online automatically. And uh, the second one is that uh, uh, we need to accept the minimal data loss. So some cases we can recover all the data loan. These are the two things applicable for disaster recovery solutions. And the next one is that I availability solution. So now we have to understand what is I availability solution. Okay, now then come to the come to the I availability solution. So let me open the document. Okay, what is I availability? So I availability in the sense. Uh, so again, so I availability and uh, uh, disaster recovery the concept is same. But uh, the concept is same. That's mean uh, made in the same replica of uh, the same location. That is the same concept. When it comes to the I availability, in I availability, so it is an automatic process. Like in either of the servers is uh, collapse or down, so the Bangalore server will automatically comes to online within very uh, time, very less time. So as for Microsoft, so less than 60 seconds, the Bangalore server or Bangalore databases come to online. So no manual intervention to bring the Bangalore servers or Bangalore databases online. So that is the one important point. And the second one is that there is no data loss at all when you're using the I availability. If you're looking for, uh, uh, if you don't want to lose any data and if it is uh, automatic process, then we have to choose the I availability solution. That's mean uh, when uh, either of us, are, if you are using the I availability solution, you configure I availability solution be between either of us servers to Bangalore servers, and uh, if either of our servers are down without manual intervention, Bangalore servers will come to online and, uh, and so these are uh, two of the uh, I will be. So Microsoft is saying that 99% uh, 
uh, so 99.999% uh, of availability we can uh, gain when using the high availability. So very less uh, uh, disavailability uh, for the high availability concept. Okay, that's only uh, less than one minute time we don't access the data during the, the failure process or maybe during the uh, Bangalore server coming to the online process. Okay, these are uh, two important things we have to understand. What is disaster recovery and what is high availability? So disaster, even, disaster is an event that causes the data loss. We have to recover the data when uh, disasters happen. So this uh, for a recovering process, I mean, recovering the data recovering process, we can call it as a DRP, disaster recovery plan. And uh, in the disaster recovery solution, the long shipping is the main one. So the long shipping is a pure disaster recovery solution. And uh, we have a mirroring. Mirroring will work for both. It will work for disaster recovery solution as well as we can also use it for high availability. And the third one is that always on. Always on is also work for both. It will work for uh, it will work for uh, uh, so based on customer need and then requirement uh, we can select either disaster recovery configuration or high availability so so that's uh, when i always and is also supporting both and then clustering clustering is a uh, only high availability solution so we cannot use it for disaster recovery solution Clustering is a pure high availability solution and it is a server level. Whereas log shipping, mirroring, and all reserve, these three we can call it as a database level. Many people call it replication is a uh, reporting solution. So many, some people call it as a disaster recovery solution. Okay, so here, the, when it comes to the replication, a replication is an object level configuration. It's not a database level, it is not the server level, it is an object level. Objects means tables, stores, triggers, so we can call it as an objects, right? So we can set the disaster recovery solution for object level. If customer needs for only specific tables, we can use the replication. If it is for entire database, we can select the long shipping or mirroring and always on or uh, if it is an entire instance, entire server level, we can use the clustering. So we'll cover all the, all five solutions in our course. First, we'll start with the log flipping, okay? I hope you understand uh, about disaster recovery, high availability. If it's clear about, if you understand these two solutions, I mean, the definition of these two things, then we can easily understand the, the remaining concept, okay? So both the disaster recovery and high availability, the both uh, mean the, the similar concepts. So maintaining the different data center, replicating the, all the data continuously. But the, the two differences here, one minute. Okay. So the two differences are, if it is a disaster recovery solution, we need to accept the minimal data loss and it is not an automatic process. When Adriver server, the source servers are down, so we have we need to spend some manual, uh, we require, it requires uh, some manual intervention to bring the other uh, uh, data center online or maybe other database online. When IWT means uh, no manual intervention, it is an automatic process. If IW server is down within the uh, seconds of time, so less than 60 seconds, less than one minute time, uh, if everything is uh, running fine, then the Bangalore server, whatever server, whatever location you're using, those servers will automatically come to online. And there is no chance of data loss at all. Okay, this is applicable for high availability. Okay, and backup and restore is also, it's a traditional, a recovery disaster recovery solutions but it is not uh, fulfilling all the requirement as like long city because backup you are taking the backups you are taking the regular backups uh, from all the databases and these backups we are taking to record the the databases record the databases in case database is corrupted right but uh, where there is a situation that um, entire database 
and uh, backups both corrected then we cannot uh, recover the uh, we cannot uh, record the data so but if you want to record a database there must be backups available right so that's uh, that is the reason backup and restore are also traditional recovery solution and uh, so in real time environment uh, maybe 60% uh, of uh, servers or databases maybe 60 to 50 percent of servers uh, they maintaining they uh, depend on the backup and restore uh, uh, solution and if the servers are critical important and uh, maybe 40 to 50 percent server they depend on the i will build and disaster recovery solutions so based on their uh, business requirement and then business criticality important uh, they decide whether they can just uh, depend on the backup and recovery or maybe i will build solutions or disaster recovery solutions okay so that's about the the concept of I have built and disaster recovery, and uh, we already discussed about solutions log shipping, database mirroring, replication always on, and uh, failover clustering. Log shipping, database mirroring, and uh, always on these three we can call it as a database level, and replication is an object level, and clustering is an instance level, instance or maybe server level, right? So that's about the the worry of I will be and disaster recovery. Now let's start with log shipping. So uh, let's uh, discuss with uh, discuss about long shipping. Okay. So what is long shipping? So what we learn uh, about long shipping means uh, what is long shipping? How long shipping is working? What are the prerequisites? And the content logging. And then later we'll discuss about failover and then troubleshooting other uh, concept related to log shipping. So first we'll focus on what is log shipping and uh, what are the prerequisites, how it is working and how to configure it. So these are the four things we'll discuss first. Okay, log shipping is a database level disaster recovery solution. Log shipping is a database level disaster recovery solution. It is not a I available solution. It is a pure disaster recovery solution. And it is available in all the versions uh, all the versions and it's support for all the editions uh, it's available in i think all versions uh, from 2000 to all like uh, 17 16 19 all the latest versions we can use the log shipping okay log shipping is a database level disaster recovery solution it is available in all the versions and all the editions so log shipping is a process of copying the log backup from one server to another server. So log shipping is a process of copying the log backup from one server to another server. So as I said that when it comes to the log when it comes to the disaster recovery and availability solutions, we have to maintain two data centers. So minimum two data centers we have to maintain. One we can call it as a primary or maybe production. Uh, in uh, database terminology, we can call it as a primary data center, and the second one is that a DR, secondary data center, or maybe disaster recovery DR uh, data center. Okay, primary data center means uh, that's mean whatever operations you are doing by default, those are directly pointing or storing in the primary data center. Okay, so once you set the log shipping between primary to DR. And if you configure log shipping between these two data centers, automatically log backup will copy from primary data center to secondary. That's mean primary data center or maybe primary server to DR server without manual intervention and uh, based on schedule, uh, whatever schedule you specified during the configuration, based on that schedule, the log backup will automatically copy from Hyderabad server to Bangalore server. 
so that is the reason we can define long sweeping long sweeping definition is long sweeping is a process of copying or moving the log backup from one server to one or more secondary servers there is no limit we can use the n number of tier servers one you can place in bangalore one you can place in delhi one in new york wherever you feel a secure there we can uh, specify uh, we can uh, use it as a ds server there is no limit to using a number of uh, I mean, uh, secondary servers simply you can say data log sweeping is a database level disaster recovery solution which is available in all the versions and all the edition and the process of copying the or moving the data from one server to one or more secondary servers or maybe one or more ds servers so this is the definition of log sweeping okay so minimum we required uh, two servers or maybe two data centers better we can say minimum we require the two servers to configure any i availability and disaster recovery solution not only log sweeping when it comes to i availability and disaster recovery solution the minimum prerequisite is having two servers okay so one we can call it as a production server one we can call it as a ds server okay so that's about the definition of log sweeping and then uh, coming to the prerequisites what are the prerequisites we require to configure log sweeping minimum we require two servers with the same configuration same edition same version same collision settings okay but again so we can also if versions are different we can support we can configure but uh, when it comes to the real time environment better to maintain the same version same collision settings uh, same edition and everything i mean the configuration should be same between uh, for the both the primary and uh, ds server production and ds server okay minimum two servers and the next free requisite is that database must be in full or bulk recovery models so we cannot configure in simple recovery model uh, in the long sweeping so if you want to configure log sweeping the database must be in full recovery model or bulk log recovery model okay and uh, same collision settings and same version preferable same version set preferable and uh, the next one is that asn services must be running on both the services okay so because the log sweeping process totally depend on the asn services if asn services are not running we can uh, the log sweeping process will not work the asn services must be running on both the servers or maybe whatever service uh, servers are participating in log sweeping the next one is that uh, uh, the next important prerequisite is that we have to maintain two folders one minute only okay so the next important prerequisite is that we require the network folder one folder we need to place it in primary one folder we need to place it in a ds server okay if you are using two then we have to place two folders these folders these two folders should be network share and, uh, and then read and write permissions required okay so these are all we can call it as a prerequisite prerequisites for log sweeping configuration two servers in one two servers with same configuration same edition same version same collision settings and uh, both servers uh, uh, in on both servers asn services must be running and uh, network folders we require the two network folders one we can place it in uh, primary one we can place it in second dr server and these two folders should have uh, read and write privileges okay so these are the prerequisites for log sweeping configuration if we clear about prerequisites other important thing the other important things we need to note that so the log sweeping can only configure for user defined databases we cannot configure log sweeping for system defined databases okay that is the one important point and that the second one is that where databases are running a simple recovery model on those databases again we cannot configure log sweeping okay and 
so points to remember and um, and the third important point is that once you configure the log shipping we should not change the recovery model from full to simple or maybe bulk log uh, recovery to simple that is the third important point to always keep in mind we should not change the uh, recovery model if you change the recovery model from full to from full or bulk to simple the log shipping will break the fourth important point is that we cannot take any ad hoc log backup once you configure the log shipping so on that particular database we should not take any log backup okay you should not take any uh, ad hoc log backup if you if you want to take if you, if any uh, reason if any uh, like in an emergency situation if you want to take a log backup we must use the copy only so using the copy only you can take but uh, if you don't want to use the copy only we should not take log backup from log shipping configured databases so these are uh, four points we always keep in mind especially changing the recovery model taking the ad hoc log backup okay clear so and then coming to the configuration when it comes to the configuration log shipping we can configure in two ways one is uh, standby mode configuration the second one is no recovery configuration so the default is that uh, no recovery configuration and uh, so what is no recovery means if you select the no recovery if you configure the log shipping no recovery on dr servers it won't allow us to see the data it is in recovery state and uh, when it comes to the standby mode when it comes to the standby mode when it comes to this standby mode if you select the standby mode uh, it will allow us to read the data from the dr database okay so there is a two configuration standby mode configuration and no recovery and when you go for standby mode configuration we require the license for both the servers because we can access the data from both the servers so it is a little costly configuration when it comes to the no recovery uh, it won't allow us to read the data from the dr servers right so only we need to buy license for one server which is a less costly uh, when configuring with standby mode configuration okay so again during the configuration we will understand how uh, the no recovery and standby mode configuration will function right so now and uh, now we'll be clear about what is log shipping what are the prerequisites and what are the different types of configuration what are the important points we need to keep in mind when you're working on log shipping now we'll understand the architecture so once understand the log shipping architecture then we'll go to the configuration part okay let me draw a diagram to understand the the log shipping working procedure okay so assume that this is the one database and uh, let me take another database so okay assume that this is this uh, this database exists in uh, hyderabad okay the database name is sample it is located in hyderabad and it is a production one just i'm giving fraud second database sample so we can use the same name or we can also use the different name so both conditions it will satisfy so if you want to go with the same name we can or else you can also use the different name sample sample dr i'm using and it is located in bangalore and uh, so so our terminal the sql terminal you can call it as a dr dr database or maybe dr server okay so that is the standard uh, uh, naming convention so production and dr 
but in log shipping terminology because in every solutions we are using the different name but in the standard uh, naming convention is production server production database dra database which is which database is uh, currently serving the business operations that database we can call it as a production which is we are using for disaster recovery purpose or IOLT purpose that uh, servers or the database we can call it as a dr that is the standard naming convention but when it comes to the log shipping in log shipping terminology production server we can call it as a primary and dr server we can call it as a secondary okay so generally when talking talking with customer customer doesn't know about the sql knowledge so they just call it production and dr but in interview point of view so they knows that like terminology when interview point of view when you're talking with the the sql whoever knows the uh, whoever knows the sql knowledge then better we can use the proper naming convention in log shipping when you're talking about log shipping production database you can call it as a primary and dr database we can call it as a secondary this is the log shipping terminology primary and secondary primary and secondary right so now we are clear about the naming uh, production database and then dr database and uh, assume that we have two servers when come back to the prerequisites we require the two servers with the same configuration same edition same uh, edition same version so everything is same and uh, also assume that agent services are running and the databases are in full recovery model so another prerequisite is that we need two folders right one folder we need to create on primary one we need to create on secondary these two folders should be network share okay these two folders in network share let me so one folder we can call it is a backup folder one folder we can call it is a one folder we can call it is a backup folder one folder we can call it is a copy folder backup folder and copy folder okay right so this folder uh, backup folder uh, usually will create on primary copy folder usually will create on secondary so there is no uh, i mean uh, mandatory to create and can also create in different server but uh, people prefer to call, uh, create this folder backup folder in primary and then uh, copy folder in secondary server so that's right so now uh, let me application okay so assume that this is the application so application data always go to the production server okay so generally they define to go to the application data to the production server production database okay and so once you configure log shipping between these two servers so three jobs will be created one is a backup job second one is the copy job the third one is the register job okay once you configure the log shipping so three jobs will be created so backup job will create a primary and copy and restore job will create a uh, secondary server so backup job will create a primary and copy and restore job will create a secondary servers so what ba backup job will do backup job will copy the data from 
uh, from production server or primary server to backup folder. So as I said, that log shipping is process of uh, copying the log backup from one server to another server. So using the log backup, the data will copy from one server to another server. Okay. So backups are will create a primary, and it is uh, continuously take the log backup and place into the backup folder. And the next one is that uh, copy job. Copy job is take the backup from backup folder and it will place into the copy folder. Okay. And the restore job. A restore job will restore the backup from backup from copy folder to restore. Oh, sorry, from copy folder and it will restore into the DS server. So that's mean using these three jobs, whatever data updated on production server or primary server, all the data will automatically uh, use by these three jobs, the data will transfer to the DS server. This is a continuous process. So based on the schedule, it will continuously transfer the data. So backup job will created in primary server. Copy job. Restore job. So this is the log shipping uh, background architecture. So once you configure the log shipping between two databases or two servers, three jobs will be created. And uh, by using these three jobs, log backup data will automatically transfer to the second server. So using these three jobs to replicate the all the data, all the changes from production server to secondary, primary to secondary server. So we can use the n number of uh, servers. So there is no um, limit. We can one we can place in Bangalore, one you can place in Pune, one in Delhi. So we can use uh, n number of uh, servers. There is no restrictions. Right. So this is the concept of uh, log shipping process. So how, what is log shipping and what is the background architecture? Okay. So just understand that this is the working architecture. So failover process, uh, once failover, how it will working, how to fail or how to bring the DR server online. So those things we'll uh, discuss after completing the configuration. I hope you understand the, the concept of log shipping, the background architecture of background uh, working architecture. If it's clear about it, then we'll, we'll go and configure the log shipping process. So here I want to use the two servers. Node one server and node two server. Let me connect the servers first.
Tensor is still coming. Okay, so here we have Node 1 server and uh, Node 1 SQL server name is uh, uh, it's a prod, not uh, sorry, not dear. So we have a Node 1 and Node 2. Node 1 is a separate operating system and Node 2 is a separate operating system. In Node 1, we have a prod SQL server and uh, Node 2, we have a DRS skill server, right? So here both servers are running with the same version, same edition, and same collision setting. So the configuration is also same, right? So as for our prerequisite, same edition, same version, uh, and then same configuration should be. I mean, so the same configuration uh, should be there for both the servers, right? So. And again, agent services also running on both the servers. Sorry. We can say that agent services running on DR server, agent services running on prod database, prod server. So now let me create a database. Uh, let me create a new database, new database. Sample. Now, ls sample. Okay, so that's my database name and one is SCA. Okay, and uh, so and the database should be in full recovery model. Full or but maybe bulk log recovery model. So I want to, yeah, the, uh, it is already in full recovery model. That is fine. Right? So, and uh, we can use the node to TS server. So, right. So now, so, and then that another important prerequisite is that we need to create one folder in primary server and one we need to create an DS server. So primary server backup folder name is backup. Uh, so the folder name is backup. So here I'm creating LS BKP. And this folder should be network share. Properties, sharing, click share button. And here we can see that we check what you want to put and again a read and uh, write permissions we can specify but uh, minimum we require read and write so usually in real time environment uh, because uh, the folders used by database administrator generally we are uh, going with the one or two layers and click click save and then. so this is the folder name close it so again the second folder we usually create on a dr server Here ls cpy 
properties sharing click share button and uh, anyway we are using admin account as uh, sql cell service account so you can use the the same account so mainly what our account agent services are using that account should have read write or maybe one or permissions on uh, these folders uh, an admin account i'm using as sql server service accounts so we can select the admin account here and done and closing now we have all prerequisites to configure log shipping now now the next step is the configuration so in the configuration the first step is that uh, uh, in slicing the data so it's an empty database let me create some tables one or two tables let me create So I create ten. I'm creating a table. Now this database has three tables. It's not an empty database. So, so once you verify this, like when you get a request to configure the log shipping, the first step is that we have to validate the uh, prerequisites. If all the prerequisites are good, then we can go to the configuration. We don't require any downtime for configuring. We can do it at any time, and uh, there is no downtime for log shipping configuration. So, and then once verify the prerequisite, the second step we need to ask whether we need to configure in the standby mode or no recovery mode. If it is a standby mode, then we need to get the license for both the servers. And if it is a no recovery, and this is the default one, we don't need to get the license for two servers. We require only license for one server. Right, so standby mode means uh, on the server, uh, it will allow us to read the data, but uh, no recovery means it won't allow us to uh, read the data. So that is the difference, no recovery and standby. First we'll configure with the no recovery, later we'll configure with standby mode. Okay, the first step uh, is that in slicing the data, okay. In log shipping, during the configuration, we can in slice the data. And again, uh, before uh, starting the configuration, we can also in slice the uh, data, right. If uh, database size is a uh, very large data, I um, mean, if, if it, Contain better we can insulate the data before starting uh, the actual configuration, log shipping configuration. If it is a small size of databases, so during the configuration, we have an option to insulate the data. You can select the insulation option and you can configure it. Okay, so first up in this configuration, first we'll insulate the data. Once insulating the data, then we'll start the configuration step. For insulating the data, what we need to do then? We need to take a full backup and one log backup from primary server and we need to restore on the secondary server. So this is, we can call it as a data insulation step. Let me take one full backup and one log backup. So I'm taking the, uh, I'm taking the backup, full backup and uh, the backup file name is lsample.bak and see backup folder. And uh, let me take log backup. Select transaction log, remove, click add button. And here, uh, ls log dot tr. Okay, cool. So that's how we took the one full backup and non-log backup. So these backup files we need to restore on the TR server. Okay, the backup files we placed on 
in primary server so we need to copy the both full backup and log backup uh, to the node to server for that we can use the network drive access and uh, place it in C drive. Now the backup files we copied to the DS server. Now we can uh, restore this to backup files. Restore database, device, Okay, node to we have to select the node to server. Sorry, I selected node one. Select the node to server and restore those two backup files. Restore database and uh, select the device. Select the backup file. So we have to restore full backup with no recovery. Again, log backup also we need to restore with no recovery. Also. So if you want to use uh, the same name, we can no need to do any changes here. If you want to use the different name, here we need to change the database name. Here I just want to go with the same name. Even in real time environment, uh, so many people prefer to use the same name. And again, so I don't want to change the settings. So I just want to go with the default settings and then go to options. So we are restoring the full backup and now we are restoring select the with replace and uh, when in slicing the data so we have to select the no recovery option select no recovery and click ok okay so full backup has been restored now we need to restore the log backup again log backup also we need to restore with no recovery option Select the log backup, click OK, options, no recovery. Right. So that this is called data initialization process. Okay. So before we starting the actual configuration, so we have to take one full backup on log backup from primary server and we need to restore on the second secondary server with no recovery option. Once complete this step, then we have to go to the, we have to do the actual configuration steps. So for that, right click on the database, go to task, ship transaction logs, and uh, enable this option, and uh, click backup settings. Here we have to specify the backup folder network path. Now let me get the backup folder network path uh, Sharing. So this is the network uh, folder path. And here we have to specify the local path. Local folder path is C ls bkp that is the physical path the network path in the then the top uh, place we have to specify the network path and in the second uh, location we have to specify the local path and uh, click the schedule button and we have to specify the log backup schedule runtime the default 15 minutes so people prefer to again it's uh, depend on the data loss condition is depend the customer is accepting 15 minutes then they can we can go to 15 minutes or 10 minutes or maybe one hour so based on the data loss uh, time we have to specify it, uh, the schedule so in my case just i want to go for two minutes i'm using two minutes 
and uh, here there is an option delete files older than 72 hours 72 hours means three days any file any file exists uh, uh, more than 72 hours in the backup folder backup network folder or local folder those files will automatically delete it okay click ok and then job name is ls backup ls sample and once specify the backup settings then we have to click the add button to add the secondary server click connect and specify the server name server name is node to dr you can specify the server name here node to dr and click connect so once you connect the server name in the drop down box we need to select the databases so here i want to select the ls sample ls sample i want to use it as a secondary database on node to dr server and here we can see the three different tabs any slice secondary database copy files are restore transaction log any slice secondary database okay so here we have three different options now the secondary database is already in place when you're using backup and restore and if you inflate the data on the secondary server in the secondary server so we can go with the the final option the last option know the secondary database is in slice okay that's uh, the next two options so using the first option so when you're selecting the first option yes generate a full backup of primary database and restore into the secondary database and create the secondary database if it doesn't exist that means this process what will do that it will generate a full backup from primary server and it will automatically restore onto the uh, restore into the secondary server if the database doesn't exist it will create a database all right and the uh, second one is that second option is that so we need to specify the backup file name so we need to take a backup so this uh, using the the backup file it will automatically restore onto the secondary server if database exists on the database it will restore with our right if database doesn't exist it will create a new database so in our case we have to use the the last option know the secondary database is in slice that means we already uh, in slice the data we already in slice the data because we took the full backup and long backup we restore so no need to use the first option second option select the the last option and the next tab is that copy files in the copy files we have to specify the copy folder network path copy folder we created on node uh, node to server sometimes we can see the network folder information here or else we have to go to the actual folder okay so let's go to the drive okay next let's go to the c drive and uh, we created lscpy go to properties sharing this is the share part Note to LSCPY. It's not copying, so let me manually update it. Note to LSCPY. 
so that is the copy folder network path so before that we can verify whether it is working or not for that uh, go to run command right it is accessible okay and again so here uh, the retention policy for the copy folder files is 72 hours if any file exists more than 72 hours in this uh, folder the file will automatically delete it so once specify the copy folder and uh, uh, copy folder path and uh, we have to schedule the copy job occurs every two minutes So that's mean copy job is scheduled for two minutes and then sorry backup job is scheduled for two minutes and also we are scheduled uh, copy job for two minutes okay and then the default uh, delete copied files uh, policy is 72 hours and then we have to click the third tab the third tab we can uh, select the configuration mode here we can see that no recovery mode and standby mode no recovery means uh, this is the default one so when you select the default option it won't allow us to read the data from the secondary databases i'm selecting the no recovery and uh, so here we have to schedule the restore job again i'm scheduling it every um, in two minutes so here we have to select the type of configuration and then we have to schedule the restore job if you go back to the the diagram so when you configure the log shipping three jobs will create in backup job copy job and restore job using these three jobs the data will copy from one server to other server primary server to secondary server so in our case backup job is scheduled at every two minutes and copy job is scheduled at every two minutes and then restore job is scheduled at every two minutes that means whatever changes we are doing at primary server, after six minutes, the changes will replicate it to the DS server. Two minutes for backup job, two minutes for copying, two minutes for restoration. Okay. And click OK. That's it. And click OK. And if you want to use uh, more servers, as I said, that uh, there is no limit to use the n number of uh, DS servers. If we, we can use more servers again click add button specify the initialization select the server database name and then follow the same settings initialization whether it is initialized the or not and then copy file settings register the settings okay we can use n number of server there is no limit and there is a one more server monitor server instance okay it's an optional so nobody wants to use it in real-time environment because uh, i guess uh, we need to get a license for uh, uh, other server without using monitor server also we can monitor the long shipping process here monitor server option so if you specify the monitor server monitor server instance name the server will continuously monitor the long shipping process and if anything is not working it will auto it will uh, send an email to configure email address okay Again, without using the monitor server, we can also monitor the log shipping process. Okay, so I don't want to specify the monitor name, monitor setting name. If you're using the monitor server, so in the where monitor server they I mean in the monitor server, if you specify the monitor server, one alert job will created on monitor server. If you not specify the monitor server, one alert job will created at primary one alert job will create it secondary again we can also use these two uh, alert jobs to monitor the log shipping process okay so real time nobody prepared to use the monitor server and click ok so log shipping configured properly and we'll see that whether log shipping is working or not Okay, so after confirming the log shipping, as I said, that uh, jobs will be created and primary and secondary. So we did not use the monitor server, so that is the reason 
one alert job will create a primary one alert job will create a secondary and here we can see the backup job so and if you go to the secondary server node 2 so a node 2 copy job and register job will create and also alert job will create it okay so using these dots the data will be replicated from primary server to secondary server if replicated or not uh, if you want to verify we can verify the we can run we can verify we can use the three options to validate the log shipping process is working or not the one way is that manually run the job if all the jobs are running then we can simply say that the log shipping process is working properly so we can run the jobs manually to testing or else we can also verify the history your backup job is running and you can also run the backup job okay backup job is running fine and now go back to the back to the node to server and run the copy job and restore job manually So it's not running. So that's mean the log shipping process is not working. So both the jobs fail here. And uh, verify that error access path. We can see that uh, access to the path node one ls bkp is uh, denied. Okay. So because of uh, service account like whatever service account service account because of service account usually will create this kind of problem let me verify the service account details yes uh, agent services we running with uh, this account let me change to the admin account So whenever you change the service account, we need to restart the password. Also uh, change the service account for main service properties. So error message is always important. Like if you see the error message clearly, if you understand, we can find the solution. So in the error message, it is saying that it is unable to access the the particular path so because the copies of will go to the backup folder and get the backup file uh, get the file from backup folder and it will copy to the copy folder so when accessing the backup folder it is not uh, when it in trying to access it is failing because of permissions so now i'm changing the service because the previous uh, service account doesn't have full permissions that's the reason i changed to the admin account it has full permissions so whenever you change the service account, we need to change the, oh, sorry, after changing the service account password, uh, we need to restart the services. Start the agent services as well. Okay. Now go to this survey server. And now run the copy job.
yeah this time it is uh, executed successfully and run the restart job as well Okay. If I say, as I said, that if all three jobs are running fine, we can set the log shipping process working fine. So instead of if somebody is asking to verify whether the log shipping is working or not, so instead of uh, running the jobs, we can also verify the VS3. Okay, if all uh, like here we can see the timestamp, and then here we can also see the success status. Okay. So when it comes to the, if there is any requirement to validate the log shipping, just we can verify the so the last runtime uh, run job is the uh, runtime is successful. Also do it for P used to for restart job. Okay. This way you can validate. The second one is that using the standard reports. Go to the right click on the main server tab. Go to reports, standard reports. There we can see the transactional log shipping status. Here we can status good and uh, here we can also see the when was the last uh, backup file, backup file name. We can see that last backup file. Okay. And we can also see the status is successful and uh, and also we need to verify in the second server go to reports standard reports So here we can see the status again good and uh, here we can see the copy file, uh, copy job, restore, uh, copy job and restore job, history information, lost copied file, lost restore file. Okay. So when you want to send uh, like some evidence related information then you can take a screenshot and you can send to that. Normally they are asking so whether it is working or not, just you can verify the job status and uh, for recent uh, runtime uh, job status and you can tell that based on the status okay so you can also use the standard reports so the third one is that using the mstv again so to understand the logs of things depend on the agent jobs we already know that agent jobs information will be in the mstv okay jobs and schedules and all kind of information will be in the mstv and the next important point is that again log shipping information also will store into the msdb database so using msdb also we can verify whether uh, the log shipping process is working or not for that uh, go to node 1 databases system databases msdb tables Here we can see that uh, log shipping related tables information, error details or primary server, secondary server. Okay, log shipping monitor primary, secondary, and uh, log shipping primaries, conference related information, status information. Everything we can uh, find using these uh, tables. Select start from. MSTB tables, system tables. There we 
can take a new Korean MSDB database. Control N, select the MSDB database and Control N. Select start from. No shipping, primary, secondary, monitor, secondary. We can also see that uh, database name, primary server information, lost copied file, lost copied uh, date, lost copied file, lost restored file, right? So timestamp and file information based on that, we can also tell, tell that the log shipping process is working. Or maybe when it is stopped with that information also we can see based on the uh, registered file information or maybe copied file information. Okay, there are many tables you can also try with other try, uh, tables what kind of information you can get it. Okay, so that's for uh, today class ending. So if we summarizing today class, we discussed about uh, what is disaster record and what is availability, right? What are the different concepts of which we can use, or maybe pro my provided Microsoft uh, for uh, for uh, using the available and disaster recovery solution? And we started discussing with the uh, log shipping. In log shipping, we discussed about what is log shipping, what are the prerequisites, what are the important points we need to keep in mind while our, while working on the log shipping config databases, and then working architecture, how it is working, and then finally how to configure log shipping. And then uh, how to validate log shipping process, whether it is working or not. So these are the things we discussed for uh, today. Okay. So as I said, that we have a one more conference, no recovery conference. Okay. Then tomorrow class we'll discuss about no recovery, recovering, uh, no recovery. Uh, sorry, standby mode conference and failover process and the remaining other things we'll discuss about. Uh, I'll discuss in tomorrow class. Okay. So the, the last final point is that, so when you're using the no recovery mode, when you're using the no recovery mode, it won't allow us to enter into the data, right? Here we can see that it is saying that it is always in a restoring state, LS sample. We cannot enter into the database, we cannot see the data, right? So that is the point to keep in mind. When it comes to the st standby mode, if you configure, as a standby mode, it will, it will allow us to enter into the database and we can do the select process. So tomorrow we'll start with the standby mode configuration and then payload process or uh, bringing the secondary database online if primary server is down. So these are all the things we'll discuss in tomorrow class. So that's all for uh, my, end, my end. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. If we don't have anything, so we'll wrap up now and then we'll catch up on tomorrow tomorrow same time so yeah i'll send the documents so we already recording the video so we have a time so please record the, please watch the video and then if you get a time so please uh, read the documents for better understanding okay and thank you if you don't have any questions we can wrap up now and then we'll catch up on tomorrow thank you thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day. Bye.